Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. For most people, today is Super Bowl Sunday. But for me, it's Hot Pepper Planting Day, the kickoff to the 2021 hot pepper growing season. Let's get started. I'm very excited about sharing my adventures with you this year. I hope you enjoyed that little tune and seeing the list of seeds I planted. Of course, some may not germinate, and I may start a second, smaller batch of seeds in a couple of weeks. I usually plant most of my seeds the first week of February. That gives me 15 to 16 weeks before I plant outside around Memorial Day. I plant so early because Minneapolis is in zone four, and we have a relatively short growing season. Here in the Northland, you have to plant early if you want a good harvest. Otherwise, varieties from tropical and temperate climates may not have enough time to fully mature and ripen fruit. If you live in a warmer zone, you could safely shave off a few weeks from the seed starting lead time. Speaking of seeds, I have a lot of them. A huge thanks to all our fans who sent us seeds in recent months. Quite a few of the varieties you sent made it onto this year's grow list, and we're keeping the rest safe and dry for future planting. We hope to grow them all over time. You may have seen our episode about confiscations of pepper seeds sent from overseas to the U.S. So we were very happy to receive our annual order from Semillas La Palma. Located in the Canary Islands, they've been our favorite seed supplier for many years. Each year we order both new to us varieties as well as our time-tested favorites. Thankfully, they haven't had any shipments seized recently. Okay, let's start sowing seeds. I've been doing planting videos every year since 2018. I've upgraded much of my gear over the years, mainly better trays and lights. My basic method is the same. Plant seeds directly in soil, add water, place the trays on heat mats, then cover with a dome to keep in moisture. I'm using ProMix organic potting mix, same as I use in the outdoor pots. I did take a few minutes to pick out most of the sticks or twigs you commonly find in potting mixes. I use six cell propagation trays to start my seeds. I wash and reuse them every year. 12 fit perfectly into a standard 10 by 20 inch plant tray. With a silver Sharpie, I label them with a number from one to 12. This way, I know what seeds are planted in each tray, even if they get rearranged later. The one on the left means they go into larger tray number one. F means that this side is the front. Now, someone pointed out to me that the only markings are on the front and the F is completely unnecessary. Wow, no F and way, dude. You just blew my mind. Here's one of the larger trays. These are from Bootstrap Farmer and they're the best I've ever used. They're thick and sturdy and built to last for many growing seasons. So we've got three 10 by 20 trays and 36 six cell seed starting trays. So that's a total of 216 cells we'll be planting. This is gonna take a while, so I'd better get started. The first step is filling up a tray with potting mix. You wanna pack down the soil a little bit, but not so densely that the sprouts can't push their way to the surface. Sometimes I pre-soak a few hard to germinate varieties, but this year I'm planting them all directly in soil. Here are the charts I use to keep track of what's planted in each cell. I make these in Microsoft Excel. It may seem like a lot of work, but it really doesn't take much time once you have a template. It's so easy to refer to the chart to see which varieties have sprouted. I'll include a link to download this template in the video description. All right, the first seeds to be planted were a gift from Barry Gill, who you may know from the Pepper Freaks group on Facebook. Depending on how many seeds I have of a particular variety, I plant from two to four seeds in each cell. This increases the chances of germination and also means I'll have multiples to transplant if they all sprout. I try to keep the seeds spaced apart so the seedlings will be easier to separate later, but it doesn't always work out that way. I'm not really a football fan, but I did have the game on while I planted. 
We normally have several of our neighbors over for a small Super Bowl party, so it seems strange to watch it alone and sober. There are two ways you can cover the seeds, and either works. You can poke them down under the surface, or you can cover them with a layer of potting mix. Either way, I like to bury them about an eighth of an inch deep. It's not an exact process. Okay, one tray planted. Only 35 trays and 210 cells left to go. It took me several hours until about one in the morning. Cat was already asleep, so I didn't film bringing the trays upstairs. Enjoy this repurposed footage from last year. I did these same things this year. I placed the trays on the heating mats. I poured a couple of quarts of water into each tray. I placed the domes on top of the trays and made sure the vents were closed. Then I went to bed. The next morning, water had condensed inside the domes, creating the super saturated environment that encourages seeds to sprout. By the way, these heavy duty domes are also from Bootstrap Farmer and fit perfectly on their trays. Clamped to the table is a bird feeder hanger I found on Amazon. You can adjust the height and angle of the two arms. It wouldn't work with heavy grow lights, but it easily supports these Sansi 70 watt lights. Topped off by a jaunty bird, it's definitely an upgrade from the mic stand method I've used to hang the lights in the past. I often get asked, when do you turn on the lights after planting? Do you wait for germination? Well, I turn them on right away. I know that seeds don't need light to germinate, but when you plant them in the ground, the sun doesn't stop shining until they sprout. So why wait? I use a 16 hours on, eight hours off cycle. I have a smart switch on a timer and also voice control via you know who. Turn on grow three. Okay. I muted her name so she doesn't activate your devices. I've gotten complaints about that in the past. One thing I won't be doing this year is starting seeds in the Arrow Garden. With the seed starting kit, you can start 50 seedlings in this unit. It works really well. I'm not doing it this year because the current Arrow Garden occupants, two Ecuadorian ricotto plants, are doing quite well. It's almost a year since they were planted. We've been picking a ripe pepper almost every day, sometimes more than one. Things have slowed down a little, but there are tons of new flowers. I love fresh ricottos, so I'm going to let these plants grow for as long as they seem happy to be growing. One just started to ripen this morning. Here's how things looked after a week. Quite a bit of germination action going on here. It's always exciting to remove the domes in the morning and see what's happened overnight. As of today, it's been two weeks. A lot more have sprouted and some are developing true leaves. I planted a lot of wild varieties that can take several weeks to germinate, so I need to be patient for those to appear. You might have noticed there's an intruder in here, one lone Galapagos tomato. People also ask me, when do I remove the domes? Well, here's what I do. After the first seeds germinate, I'll open the vents on the domes to get some air circulating in there. Then I'll start taking them off for a short period every day, like maybe one hour in the morning and again in the evening. Every day, I'll leave them off for a longer period. Today, I'll leave them off for about eight hours. In a week from now, they'll only be on during the eight hours of darkness. When I'm pretty sure no more seeds will germinate, I'll remove the domes for good and unplug the heating mats. In the next update, I'll be starting the next step, transplanting seedlings into larger pots and grow bags. Time for a few shout outs. First up, Ralph and Rania from Belgium. Rania writes, Hey Rob and Kat, we are big fans of your channel. Ralph started to grow his first pepper plant a few months back and it's going great. Watching your videos always brings great joy to our day. Thank you for all the hard work you put into your songs and videos. It's our pleasure, Rania. Next up, Zayed is a young man who's doing some impressive indoor gardening, including multiple varieties of peppers. Check out his new YouTube channel to follow his progress. It's called I Grow Peppers and Many Others. Finally, here's the Mighty Mustache, a pepper-centric YouTuber who was inspired by Seven Pot Club to create his own hot pepper song and video. It's very entertaining and I think you'll enjoy it. I'll include links for both channels in the video description. If you enjoyed this kickoff to the 2021 hot pepper growing season and you want to see more, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. Check out all our 7Pot Club logo and hot pepper related apparel and other merch at 7pot.club merch. If you'd like a free 7Pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at 7pot.club card. 
And for even more Seven Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob.